I'd like to welcome you all to today's um, presentation. Um, my name is Alan Schwartz, and I am the chair of the board of a wider bridge. Um, we've, I'm so happy, not happy, but I see so many of our friends who are on this call from, from America, North America. I see from Israel, many friends are here together. And I think part of what we're having this call today is not only about getting information about the Israeli elections, but also we're dealing with a troubled time for all of us, for the entire LGBT community around the world. Not only in Israel after the elections, but next Tuesday we face some challenges here with our elections in the LGBT community in the United States. And if you follow the news, this has been a global phenomenon of extremism and anti-LGBT phobia around the world in elections, including in Europe recently as well. So today it's, it's somewhat of informational, but it's also, we look at this as a solidarity event for us to come together in a sense and find light out of some of the darkness that's all around us on both sides of the ocean, in Israel and the United States and in Europe and around the world now, and the challenges that are facing the LGBT world. One of the reasons, one of the, Wider Bridge's name is a, was, came, came out of the famous song and saying of Rav Nachman about the whole world is a narrow bridge and the main thing is to have no fear. And I think one thing we're dealing with a very scary time, all of us in, in all sides of the Atlantic and all over the world right now. But I think it's important to realize that while there's a lot to be fearful for, like, like we are as a wider bridge, we have to come together and have no fear when we're united as a group together. So I'm happy today that we have several, we have one special guest, correct? Who are gonna join us today from Israel to talk about the Israeli issues here that face us. And also, I think I want to also have the discussion go in the context of even what's happening here in the United States. And a lot of the same issues and the same challenges that are faced by the Israelis we're facing in America. And while the faces may be different, the same cast of players are behind them in many ways of hate. So we have with us two great friends and part of the Wider Bridge family. First, we have Hila Pierre who's the co-chair of the Aguda, the Association of LGBT Equality in Israel. And she may have a special guest with her today as well. And we also have George Avni, Avni who recently was part of our delegation that came on the Wider Bridge Mission to America. And he is the editor-in-chief of WDG, the biggest LGBTQ newspaper in Israel. And I thought we probably could start, and I'm gonna ask you all that we have, if you have questions, to put the questions into chat and we'll try to get to everyone's questions later as we get along in the program. I'd like to ask George and Hila individually how they personally feel the implications are here of towards Israelis, including the LGBT community, and share your, your personal feelings about what's happened over the last day in Israel. So who wants to start first? Go ahead. Hila will start first. Oh, George, okay, George will start first. George is a, a, I'm, George, go first, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you personally, um, I have to say I'm not really surprised. I mean, I don't know why, but I felt like this is going to be the result. Um, I, I'm mostly worried about the, the reaction of, uh, of the, the new parliament members of these uh, right-wing uh, parties. They're not new. I mean, all of them used to be parliament member in the last Knesset, but now there's like, they have like this, um, I don't know how to say it, but like they feel like more powerful and the vote they got and the power they have now after this last election, last Tuesday is much more meaningful. And I think like the th they think they're in, this is now their time to to achieve all their goals and all, all their uh, um, dreams, if you can call it like that. So I'm quite worried, but I also think like, and that we, we can handle them. I mean, we, we, we had it before, we had many like them, many others, maybe not in the same scale, um, in the same volume, but uh, they usually start like that. And I think we can, if we work together, if we think about um, man manage our, our steps, um, I mean, we can pass that. Um, 
I'll start personally and then I'll have to end with the optimistic side because well, that's just me. Um, personally, today was a very rough day for me. Um, we've gotten so many quotes on quotes in the media from the upcoming party members. And to be frank, I completely agree with George said. I mean, that's exactly that. It's not anything new. It's not something we didn't see coming, which kind of connecting to what you said before, Alan, with the trend that we're seeing worldwide with the uprising of extremists and right wings. And I think in Israel, it's a bit more complex. I think in Israel, we have so many political identities to each person. And then we are forced to choose a lot of times between our social preferences to vote and our security preferences to vote on. Um, and what is happening right now is a very, very right wing shift security wise. And with the build of this coalition, it's taking all the votes and abusing it to social voting. And that is what we're seeing against us right now. And this very, very right wing coalition is formed from one of the parties that is under the Tsionuta the Teeth is the Norm Party that has been leading the campaign over the last what three and some years of only mom and dad equals family. And now they're in the Knesset and they have immense power. And their main goal is to throw us back five, six, seven years and then keep going. So to hear all the quotes coming out today about the first things that they are aiming at was simply heart heartbreaking. To Let's hear talk a little talk, talk, talk about a little bit that I think I've, I've read it. It's recently come from the last hour or two this has come out. So. so so the morning started with three main things they were pointing at. It was the we what we basically taking back everything that we accomplished in the last Knesset in the last year, which means that gay men will not be able to donate blood again. That is the first thing. Then they mentioned that they want to take out all the medical treatments for trans people. And that is going even further back than things that we accomplished in the last year and a half. And what was the last thing, George? That was... Simply insane. Do you remember? The three conversion therapy? Oh, yes. Conversion therapy, therapy. Uh, conversion therapy that was only approved through the Ministry of Health. It means only psychologists and, and therapists were not allowed to perform, uh, to perform conversion therapy or conversion practices. Um, so that was the morning. And it was heart-wrenching because it was strictly aimed to the weakest parts of our community. Um, as the day went on, the next expressions were about banning gay organizations from getting into schools for workshops, which is unbelievable. And they call it protecting the youth. And the last thing we got about two hours ago was a quote on that the first thing they're planning on doing right now is uh, canceling gay pride in Jerusalem through the courts. And after Jerusalem, they're going to cancel. They're planning on canceling gay pride in Tel Aviv legally. Yeah. And I think, um, we, Hila, you have talked, we talked about this, that um, a lot of these, with, with the attacks on the different group, part, segments of the LGBT community, are very similar to what we're seeing here in the United States. And same strategies are being, are being implemented. And we've shared this in the Israeli, this been this, like we have the, the, the transphobia that we see here in the United States has also appeared in Israel. And it's similar cast of characters that are working on all on both sides of the ocean here on these issues. But before we get into that, into that side, can you talk a little more about these three parties, a little bit about their history for people who don't know about them and their history of where they've come from. And because, you know, they've really morphed into something quite, um, I don't wanna say scary, but it's pretty, it's pretty scary for, say, from the original intent that they were created. It's a little scary. George, do you want to take that? Yeah, okay. So um, basically, this uh, this mm. list is really made from three key parties. The one is the Tsionuta Datit with Bezalel Smutrich, 
and uh, it's not you new in the member parliament since I think 2019. And he also used to be a minister, minister of transportation. And the second one is the uh, Otsma Yudit, it's Itamar mm -hmm. Ben's party. He also was a member of the last parliament. And the third one is Noam. And this is a very small party that their main issue they're talking about is, uh, is LGBTQ. And like the, their main goal and the main thing they talk, all the campaigns that Hila mentioned before are dealing with uh, family values and like totally targeting um, uh, LGBTQ families. And, and they form together to one list because they want to, to maximize their votes and to make sure they will go again, get again to, into the Knesset with the much seats they can uh, get. And it worked, they got 14 seats. And uh, that's it basically. And most of, all of them are like a right wing parties, but it's, it's, it's very, it's something that always happened in the, in the right wing uh, politics in uh, Israel. Every time you have like the extreme right and a year after the extreme right becomes a center and then you have a new, more extreme right and then so on and so on. And like a few years ago, Naftali Bennett was the extreme right for us and it was a disaster that he was elected to the Knesset and he was like the biggest enemy of our community. And Last year, was prime, he was prime minister, and we were so re relieved that it was him. So it's crazy. So now we have like every time, like it's more, more and more extreme. So we come on, it's the last one, but we don't know how far it's going to get. You know? And the parallels globally are right there in that um, we're seeing that you look at Italy now as a neo fascist party is coming to power. And two years ago, you thought the, the conservative party was the end of the world there, too. And the, Le Pen's did so well in France. And I, all I have to say is the United States right now, where we have the, the extreme is off the chart, and it's not the Republican Party that we knew 10, 15 years ago. So I think it's a it's a frightening trend that's global right now. And, and I use the word frightening from the perspective of those of us who are members of the LGBTQ community and allies and women and others as well, and the Arabs in Israel and others, and others who aren't as religious as they are. And I find that a little ironic because I was raised, I'll say this, as a religious Zionist. And this is totally alien what this is, party has morphed into from my childhood. It is nothing that, that this was originally. I'm talking in the 1960s. And so it's, that's, that itself says, really, to what George, what you're saying, that the, we see a morphing of political parties to the extremes right now on the extreme right. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, some... We talked about some of the things they taught. Hilo, you mentioned some of the things that they came out today in their statements. But could both of you talk a little bit about what the implications you see to, for LGBT rights and, and inclusion in Israel by, the, by their election and their inclusion in the, in the cabinet? Well, I think, I think I, I strongly believe that, first of all, before any action they can actually take, their very existence in positions of power and the things that they say affect our public sphere so much and so deeply. And I am very sad to say that I am sure that we're going to see a massive increase in LGBTQ phobia and violent incidences in the streets. That's simply how it goes. Every time we've had a, a bad government with homophobic people speaking their minds, the public reacted. Um, and I think that's the first thing we're going to see before any action can take place. And it's already starting. The hate conversations online are insane and we're trying to monitor it, but it's just out of control just from today. Um, and past that, there's a lot of places where they can actually do damage and, and throw us back. Um, apart from the three things that I mentioned in the beginning that they're aiming for, and on top of that, gay pride in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. And by the way, what they're aiming for is to make gay pride illegal, simply illegal. Um, 
I don't really know how that's going to work, but the path that they're going through is to change the legal system uh, and to have a way to basically annul Supreme Court rulings. So they're trying to kind of block every way that we can make progress and block them. Um, and that's very fearful. Very, very fearful. And I think what you, when we talk about the courts, I think that's a whole, probably should have a little discussion on that in that a lot of people on the call don't know that, that like the United States, like here in the United States, a lot of our gay LGBTQ rights come from the court systems as the United States is very similar as well. And um, the attack, which you see here in the US and other countries, and in this, and now talk a little, maybe you can talk a little bit about how the strategy, they're doing a very similar strategy that's happening here in the United States with the court system to um, diminish and destroy LGBTQ rights that have happened over the last 40 years. So could both, one of you, both of you talk a little about the court system and, all, and, the, and these, the election of these, of both of all these characters? Um, yeah, um, in Israel it's the same. A lot of our achievements came from the court, from the uh, high court. A lot of appeals that came from the LGBTQ members of the community. And after a struggle of many years, um, they gave us this, uh, uh, this achievement. But um, what they are trying to have now, it's, it's called the override clause. It's in Hebrew, it's Piscate Gabrut. It's actually mean that even uh, even if high court is uh, is canceling one of the laws because it's not uh, it's not constitutional, we don't have a constitution in Israel, but we have laws that are similar to con the constitution. So we know, even if uh, something like that happened and the high court uh, said that this law is illegal, um, so they can they can cancel it. I mean, they can cancel the decision of the high court. And that's final. It basically means that every law that is unconstitutional uh, can be like reassigned after uh, one uh, vote, and basically that's it. And it can be any any anything. It can be even maybe I don't know, no more elections. I don't know. So I mean, this this one clause can like change the entire um, system of of. Uh, of the court of the judge here in Israel. And this is very frightening, not only for LGBTQ community, I mean, for, for all citizens. Uh, and like you mentioned here also a lot of, because our political system is so complex, most of the, of the achievement, or most of the changes we had in the last year were, weren't by legislation. I mean, they were like, um, regulation that the ministers and uh, just made inside their offices without uh, long and complicated legislation. So it's, it was very easy to, to, to change them, but it's very easy to change them back. I mean, like, you know, they can sit down the government in one month, a few weeks, change everything back and like throw us back again. And like without, no, they don't even have to vote for it. They don't need to bring it to the Knesset for voting. So. Um, and since so it's here in the United States, we just have the abortion ruling, which is devastating. But this is even more than where the, this is even, this is the, they're, not, they're not even being transparent through the court system. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned, by the way, that he's very much against, uh, against abortions and will move against abortions in Israel. I think, and I think that's important also that we realize this is that we're not, it's not only LGBTQ community that's under, maybe Hila, you could talk a little about the, what you were saying about women are under siege as well by these, by these parties and people who are not as, I'm going to put this in quotes, as religious, as the same kind of religious as they are. And that can, you know, that means everybody. So Hila, can you talk yeah, this a little about that? This is definitely the liberal struggle. It's not the gay struggle. It's not the LGBTQ right. struggle. Uh, it's, it's completely obvious. Um, on one of my posts, I was trying to explain to religious women why this cannot, feminist religious women, why this cannot be their vote. They're voting actually against themselves. Even if it feels like it's their natural place to vote for, going further and further right. Um, I mean, part of what I would love to explain is in their campaigns, Smotrich and Bengvir, the Tzionuta, the Tik, they really downplayed 
everything, every subject, apart from security subjects. They put all their LGBTQ phobia, what we say, under the floors. They didn't mention it. They're actually trying to say, like Bengville was saying things like, I have no problem with gay people. They were saving it for after the results to, to get the votes on the security ticket. Um, and what we're seeing right now is just overthrow of everything liberal. This is going to be against women. It's going to be against gay people. It's even going to get climate awareness. I mean, they're canceling the extra taxes on, on single-use cutlerware because religious people use a lot of single-use cutlerware. So it's so leaning and has no different worldwide perspective um, that it's difficult to not pay attention. Another thing that they're planning on, which relates to the Ethiopian community and the Russian community, is they're going to make all the laws for, Alan, how do you say giyu? The conversion, the gay, gay, gay room, convert, people convert. It's a convert, the whole issue of Jewish conversion, which is a big issue in Israel. So they're going to do it a lot more strict. So, so many communities are going to be hurt by this but, government. And I think people should understand that the Russian community, many immigrants came to Russia over the last 30 years, 40 years, and many of them have not undergone strict rabbinic conversion. And now with their children and the like, they serve in the army. And this is an issue that a lot of Orthodox rabbis have been challenged by and have come up with new options and new solutions. And unfortunately, even within the, these Orthodox rabbis are even being, will be ostracized by these cast of characters. True. So, so this struggle and this distress that we're feeling right now, we're just the first people in line. We're the easiest targets right now. Um, but I'm sure it's going to go way beyond us. What I, what I want to do is I, we have, I want to talk in a few minutes about um, how, you, how, will, how it's going to change for the, for well, both of you are active, you know, George is involved with an LGBT organization with, and, and Hila with al -Gadab. We'll talk about that in a few minutes about how we're gonna change, but I wanna, I see one question, a couple of questions came in, let's intersperse some of them into the conversation. And we got one question here about um, that there's many progressive and LGBTQ commission um, organizations are plan, continue to plan trips to Israel. And this year is the 75th anniversary of Israel, a reason to celebrate. And my question, the question that's being asked here, how would you respond when trip participants rethink, rethink their trips to Israel? Should they be thinking their trips to Israel in light of what's happening with the election and the new government? I it's think a that's a, bit, it's a bit, that's a, it's a great question. And I'm kind of racking my brain and I think it's a bit too soon for, you, for me to even try and answer that. I you know, one of the rumors that came out today is that they're strongly considering within the Likud to make Amir Ochana, who is an openly gay man from within the Likud, is a very high class, uh, very high ranking in the, in the party, to make him the Sorry. Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, and that to me would be pinkwashing. I have problems with that, severe problems with that. Um, but I think it's a bit too soon for me to even to answer truly to that question. And even, <laughs> even, and even, I, I'm, even with Ohana, I think we have to wait and see because people do surprise you. I mean, Amir, I, I, I think he could, I think everyone, I've, I've been surprised politicians over the years. So I'm, I'm just part of the optimist in me. I but, have to say, Ohana did a few interviews in the last three months mm -hmm. where he openly spoke out when he was asked about the gay community and what's going to happen with gay rights in Israel. And he promised on camera that gay rights in Israel will not be harmed, that he's very strong within the Likud and he will, he will make sure of that. So right now, this is what I'm saying. It's a bit too soon for us. We're feeling the heat. It's definitely on us, um, but we're holding tight. I mean, my initial, when I hear that question, I'll listen, I, I, I agree with you, Hill, it's too early to answer that question about what, you know, what we should do. But I think in general, I think what's also important is part of what like a wider bridge does is not about, we don't go to Israel because we're there to, to um, support the government of Israel. 
We're there to support you all, the LGBTQ community and our friends there. And to people to have an interchange between individuals directly. And it's our trips are not dependent um, on the government. But again, we have to, you know, we have to basically see, wait and see what happens here. I think it's early. So I, I don't see any other questions now, but people, you can put your questions in the chat box, in the Q&A, please, that more questions. But I'm going to turn to the question that I was going to ask a few minutes ago about with the change of government, how will your work, all your, both your works change in the LGBTQ community? And um, I know there's been a lot, there's been funding issues that, you, that, that, are, that are wonderful that it had in. Um, can you talk about how the change, what you see that your media change and change what potentially will happen in your work? Uh, George? I'll start. I just want to say, it's something that I tried to speak, but I was on mute, I didn't notice. So about the trips, uh, uh, I, I also think it's a great question. It has like two answers from, from my point of view. I mean, the first one, I agree with what you said, you're coming for the, for, to support your friend and your community and you're not coming for the Israeli government. And, and so part of it coming to Israel and maybe coming to, um, to gay, um, uh, events or coming to and make gay um, uh, panels or uh, uh, things like that maybe even even be good because I mean they can see that our work and all the things that we are doing are still continuing and continuing with our friends from Israel and abroad and it's not not going to stop this is one thing but the second thing I think if we if we if I'm thinking like more globally I think maybe um, if people will stop, it's very important to them how Israel and how the Israeli government will look outside, how the world will react to this government. To this new government. So if maybe they're going to see that maybe it's, it's harmed the relationship of Israel with the other uh, parts of the world, maybe they can make them think. There's a question related to what George you're saying is just, just what do you what do you both of you feel there's a chance that um, the new prime minister to be, be, be Netanyahu would form a party without these extremists? It seems like it's not an option with the mandate num game not number. Now, at least, yeah, not not on no, not on the first round. Maybe a bit later, but not now. I mean, it's it's very easy for him. It's too easy to to give it up. I think there's a bunch of questions that come in, but why don't we come back to my my question about um, how is your work going to change, um, given the new challenges that face the, the LGBTQ community? And George, you want to start, and then Hila. Uh, yeah, when my work in when, uh, uh, in the magazine is, uh, has nothing to do with the government. So it's not going to affect it, but it definitely I have a lot of more to, what to write about because the last year was very quiet. Uh, so this is on the one hand, but uh, my other uh, uh, my other hat I work for the Israeli AIDS Task Force, and some of the some of the changes that I'm talking about uh, now about ban gay people from donating blood. It's one thing that we worked hard for, for it to achieve it, and now they're going to take it back. So this is one thing. Another thing that Hila mentioned also is, um, is some of the treatments. Some of them are also treatment for HIV prep. You also have it in, in the States. So they're talking about like taking it out also. And so it's going to affect a lot. And, and of course, the budgets, I mean, some of, some of our projects are with collaboration with the health department or welfare uh, ministry. And I don't know if this budget will, will last for the next year. I have no idea. So this is basically. Well, talk. Yeah, the challenges today and, and your response just to, to the media. Context, just to put in context what George said about the funding coming from the government. In the last year with the, the government that is now stepping down, we've had some huge accomplishments and some of them were in the form of budgets and support for the community all across Israel. 
We've gotten a plan of 90 million shekels for three years. We call it the 30, 30, 30. Um, but we haven't gotten the first 30 and now it's all gonna drop. Um, these funds are not in the budget, base of the budget means that a new government can just cancel them. Um, some of the plans and most of the money was going through the organizations. So, oh, wow. Shalom. <laughs> um, it's part of these new government. They shut down the lights. Blessed be the... Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. I think last uh, week, wasn't it the, um, the Torah portion we just started Bereshit a few weeks ago, so by you are, you know. <laughs> um, so the, the big fear is a lot of the fundings for programs that already started or were meant to start and last for years in the future is all going to drop. Um, so that's 90 million shekels almost that we're about to lose because we managed to secure a bit of the funds before the government fell. This one right now, it's the effect that it's going to have on every one of our work, all the organizations is immense. Um, the fear of not just the 90 million shekels going poof, even things and programs that were, were activating until now with welfare, with social change, nothing is sure right now. Um, and our assessments say that at minimum, very bare minimum, and it's going to be severely cut. Um, and so that's the budget aspect of the change in our daily lives. The second aspect is our community. I mean, people woke up today to a reality where they are not safe, simply not safe. And they're shattered. I spoke to five different people yesterday that reached out to me and I sent them to talk to emotional helplines. There's simply an anxiety. They don't know what's going to happen and I can't give them any reassurances apart that we're going to, do everything that we possibly can. We're here to fight this, but I'm not sure that we can do everything. This is a fight right now, not for accomplishments. It's a fight of holding, just holding our ground. Um, so the way it's gonna affect us is we need to strengthen ourselves from within, straighten the lines and be prepared. You, talk, talk, you mentioned earlier today, you have a, hot, you have a war room already that you've created. <laughs> no, it speaks, it speaks to what's at, what the issues at hand are. So with everything that happened today, we understood that I, I got to the offices today at eight o'clock in the morning and I have yet to leave. It's 8.30 p.m. right now. Um, the ground is burning, literally. Um, the quotes are not stopping. They will not stop giving interviews and forming out their plans. The, the community is forming anxiety and understandably, and we have to reassure our community. So the first thing that we did right now is we scheduled an activist meeting for Sunday evening to give people a place to speak and be heard, to talk about a, a bit of what we can do, what our options are. If we're gonna demonstrate, the first thing I keep saying is, this is not a sprint, this is a marathon. If this coalition of 65 is going to be right and stable, we're going to have four years of this. So we have to be smart and not so emotionally driven. So I'm really trying to hold everybody back. I think that's the main purposes of the organizations right now. That's our responsibility to care and be responsible about what's going to happen in the next three, four years coming down the road. I see a lot of, I see some questions coming in. I think it's something that I can answer with you is about what, what, are, you, what are you looking for People from other parts, from Australia, other parts of the world are asking, how can we help? And how, what kind of allyship do you expect from the organized LGBT and organized Jewish communities? Both, you know, the different communities, what, would, what, what, do you need, what, would you, what do you need right now? And I'll let Gila and then George go, and then I'll say a few words as well from a, quite a bridge perspective. I strongly believe in international pressure, I have to say. Um, I believe that even if organizations from Australia write letters, official letters to, 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 to the prime minister, to whatever people in office, it has magnitude. 
And I think we're going to need support. And it can't feel as if what happens in Israel stays in Israel. Um, I was just, there was just a push coming in on my phone. I'll share with you that the, um, certain people from the, from the U.S. government said that they will only partially cooperate with Smotrich and Ben Gvir. That's amazing. That is amazing for us, that statement. That's immense support. Um, and I think even if it's organizations, just to know that you're there and you care, to know that you reach out, that you will formally express your, I don't know, con contempt to what's going on or that you're worried about the future, it gives us strength and it shows the government that they're being watched. They can do whatever they want. I'll speak from a wider bridge, which is your part, which is the partner here in this in the rest of the diaspora and, and the North America world. Is as, as you know, we spoke, we've issued two or three statements similar to what Wang Hila's lines in the last week. And we don't we don't as an organization um, issue the statements on other in Israeli elections because we that's not it. But we felt it's very strong these needed to be said, and we will continue to do that. But I, I want to add something here that I think I felt that I've been like you. I've been getting a lot. I've been getting a lot of um, text messages, and I've been, anyone who's on the call who's texted me, I apologize. I haven't been able to get back to you, but um, a lot of text messages expressing the same scared, frightenful, very, very scared about their families, their children, and their partners, and just their lives as a whole right now. And I think he like I really want to thank that Dub because I think what I hear you talk the. I think taking longer, addressing people's anxieties initially is very important, but I think it's also important to take a long, longer range view. And I think that's important. But I think in the short term, from our perspective here outside of Israel, I think it's important, and I know we've gotten a lot of people saying thank you, is to express to any Israeli who calls you just that you love them and that you care about them and you're here to be with them. And we're, and we're facing, again, as I said earlier, we're facing some of the same challenges. Next Tuesday in America, we can anticipate, we'll be feeling, I'm, I'm, I'm unfortunately expecting some similar feelings to what the Israeli community is feeling um, this week in the United States from the perspective of the LGBT community. But I think reaching out to people and just saying, we're here, we're allies, we're together, I think probably would go, goes a long way as well to people, so they're not alone. Um, George, you wanna add anything to that? I, I, I totally agree with what Hila said. I mean, this international pressure is the most important thing. And not just it's pressure on the government or maybe on more the more uh, liberal parts of this government. Yeah, we have liberal parts in this government. Uh, and uh, so they know that they are being watched and it's very important to them how Israel look on the outside. It's very, very important. We know it from day one, even today, they already started talking about it. Uh, so this is one thing. And the other thing is that the, just, I think people, we're talking about the government now, but some of the things that can happen as a result of this uh, government is maybe um, what will happen outside. I mean, in, with this, between the cities and in the streets, because sometimes when you have this, atmosphere of homophobia in the government, it can like form the same atmosphere on the streets or in schools, bullying for in kids in schools, or maybe in workplaces or I don't, everywhere. So um, this is more, this is our more responsibility for our community or for people. And this is something also we can get from, from other, uh, it's like, it's, it's very different, yeah, but like we did in Ukraine during the war. So it's like solidarity, something like that. And that went and, and Hila was if you, Hila went over to the Ukrainian border with, for her professional work. And I think that also that when Israelis and others and from America and other people came over to Ukraine, Hila you can talk about that. I think it also gave a lot of hope to the people like we can do for the Israelis right now. Uh -huh. I think the, the exact way that we felt for the gay Ukrainian community 
and the way that the Israelis here felt for the Jewish people in the Ukraine is exactly the same. We feel sympathy for each other because we're connected. We have common grounds and we believe in the same values. So I think it's very important that we stand for each other. I agree. Um, there's a few questions that have come popped in again. People, please forward more questions now. There was a question about abortion, which I should probably ask. Um, wait, wait one second. Um, was but what the it says um, would the policy on abortion return to the pre lapid ruling, or would it go into abortions only for strict interpretation of nefesh of saving of a life? That's what they wanted. They want to bring it back for, to pikuach nefesh. It's it's very, it's still strict in Israel. You have to go through a committee. What the Pid rules did, like under the Pid's uh, being PM, they eased on the the terms to have an abortion. Um, and what's going on right now is they want to make it a lot more strict because by the rules of the halacha, it. Well, there. This is a that's a tricky one. We we say that because rules of halacha. A mo the majority, the exactly. the mo majority of Orthodox rabbis I know will say that, the, that you, being against abortion is against halacha. Abortion should be allowed. I'm going with that one. Yeah, but, I, but you're right. But I think what you're saying is part of the problem with these parties is that they basically see, is everyone is, you know, face, as LGBT people, we face being the other, the other, the other in the world, and I put that in quotes. And women face that, and other and people of color face that here in the United States and in Israel. And the demonization of the other, if it's that you're not as religious as me, or you're not the same color as me, or you're not the same gender, whatever, they are what is what we're facing in Israel right now, correct? Right? In that level. Um, I do want to make note, I see and there's a note here from Michael Lavers. Michael is um, um, alumni. He's one of part of our Wider Bridge alum, alumni family, and he also is one of our esteemed writers for the Washington Blade, and he wants to, first of all, thank us for this great discussion, that'll be discussion, but he also wants to recognize George for his work in covering these LGBTQ issues in Israel, and he also says it's an honor to work with you, George, so I would like that came through. Um, there was a question about um, but as, as we look now to the poll, the um, results are something to be finalized. The parties on the left, um, merits, labor, labor is a struggle to come in. Um, we talk a little about, you know, I don't want to get off on Mechela here, but the decision of labor not to merge with merits and what the implication this is for a longer term for these kind of values that they represent as a party. George, want to start? What you, yeah. you look at? First of all, I mean, I saw the I saw the question. They talk about also the seats, like it was supposed to be right. equal. So basically, according to what uh, the information we have now, um, the amount of votes for the uh, left block, like Netanyahu block and the, the the second block, the other block are almost equal. It's like, um, but the the the, the system. Uh, our system is a little bit complex because you not vote for just you vote for your for the party for the list that you want to go see in the Knesset, but we have a minimum of uh, you cannot enter the Knesset only with one seat. The minimum you can enter is with four seats, and for that you need 3.25 percent of the votes. So if you not enter, if you don't get the 3.25 percent of the vote, you lose your seat, your four seats. You not you can't go. With, with only one, and these votes are like going to garbage. And um, so this system changed, it's changed differently the, the, the votes and the seats. And this is why, because Merit didn't get the four seats, but they were, they were very close, they get maybe almost 3%. So we changed the map of the seats and the seats that their merits didn't get moved shift to the bigger parties. This means more to the, to the, uh, right um, side. Now, it basically means that, yeah, I think we know it was a mistake because if uh, um, we have two things that to change this map. First, that Merit didn't pass this, uh, this minimum uh, votes that he'd get signed. And the second one is also the Arab parties that ran individually 
and that's also change. And uh, I don't know to say how it's gonna affect the future because merits was like uh, a big part of our uh, um, of our yeah. message all time, even when they have like very few seats, they're always very, a lot of impact, especially for the LGBTQ community. A lot of the things that we did are when we achieved are thanks to them during a few decades back, even because before being like pro LGBTQ was like trendy or something. And, and so it's sad, I don't know, but like we said before, I'm optimistic. Maybe the next election will be only in four years. But uh, last time, uh, Yamin and Naftali Bennett didn't enter the Knesset, and the other, the election after that, he was prime minister. So you can never know. Hila, do you want to talk about that a little? I'd like to give a different aspect to that. Okay. Um, a bit about what's going on voting like the voting map within the gay community. Mm -hmm. This is going to be Thank quite you. a shock, I assume. But that was my next point, so good. 2%. <laughs> we did a survey, um, it was five days ago. Seems like a lifetime ago, but it was actually five or six days ago. We did a survey within the gay community. Who are you voting for? What are your political views? What are your challenges? 2% of the gay community in Israel voted for the Tzionut Adetit, for Smotrich and Ben Grimm. Shock. Even a bigger shock, 9% voted for right-wing parties. Complete shock. But if you think about it for a minute in depth, maybe it's not quite the shock. This is a bit of what I was addressing in the beginning the multiple identities that we have to deal with living in Israel, the, the immense options of parties. And we don't only, we don't necessarily vote every time that we do, and we do vote often, but we don't necessarily vote for our social views. We vote for our security views as well. And when, when one ident identity cancels out the other, we have a problem. And this is what's happening right now, actually. I don't even know how to explain this. My mom voted for Bibi. She's not LGBTQ phobic. She's very accepting. She's a wonderful mother. I consider her a part of a gay community. She's a wonderful, proud grandmother, but she cannot handle voting for anything that's left wing. She simply can't. And when we fight about this, and we, I try to not fight about it often, but when we do, she keeps saying, the most important issue is security. And then I go insane because she's putting down or dismissing my daily life and my reality, but she will not fudge from that. So the, ex the exact same inner discussion meets every gay, man or woman in Israel when they're going to the ballots to cast their vote. And a lot of the votes that we're giving to the right-wing parties were given because of security views. I want to use, I wanted to clarify your term a little bit, illusion of security. Yes. Because the truth is, all, every, all the parties, most major parties are all strong, including Likud and Merit, Merits are all agreement in security and have, and have proven, all the parties have, have a proven record of, um, of, being, of, his, of protecting Israel's security. So I think that's a bit of an illusion that, that it's... The perception in Israel is strong right, mm -hmm. weak left. And the fact is that the illusion and the, the persona that they were trying to build for the last four or five years in Israel is left wing only deals with social issues right wing deals with security issues. But the mesh that we're seeing here between the parties that are right wing security wise and the mm -hmm. right and the parties that are right wing with social issues, that's our major issue. Apart from Lieberman, we do not have a party that's right wing on social issues and kind of well liberal on the social issues. So right now we're seeing 
an abuse, in my view, of votes that were given to the right security issues, and they're using those votes to cast social changes that are simply, and, and just to even clarify that, in 2019, we did a survey with the general Israeli public, okay? 75% of the general Israeli public, Jew, Jewish people, Arab, Arab, uh, Arab people in Israel, everybody, 75% completely agree with the gay community's right for equality. So those 75% are not gone. They're not suddenly LGBTQ phobic. They're not racist all of a sudden. They're voting because of security issues, but now it's coming back on us. I want to, two things. First, I want to, you just talked about this. The, um, I think the same issues again are happening in the United States and Europe as well. We see the same issues in the voting patterns. But one question someone has asked is, is there, is there a link or is, there, is that survey a public yet? And I, I assume it's in all in Hebrew? It is. Well, I, I can't. I'd be happy to pass it on to Wider Bridge if you guys yes, would like. We'll, we'll, Wider Bridge will publish it. We'll, we'll put a link for it on our on our on our social media pages that after this after this call. But back to, back to your survey. Um, I've studied myself a lot of the election demographics around the world during elections. And one thing struck me was I think one of the recent French elections, where if I remember, there was a large amount. They looked at the LGBT community and they looked specifically at gay men. I think it was on that part. And they saw a larger segment of gay men voting for Le Pen for people under 30. And I'm curious, I, and, I, and I, I'm not trying to make a, I'm trying to understand what's happening in Israel. There were a lot of supporters for, ben, for, for these extremist parties that were younger voters. And is there anything in your, in your survey that reflects any of that? And thoughts both of you on that issue from both George and Hila? Uh, just in a, in a sentence, the survey completely agrees with that the demographic. Most of the people from within the gay community that voted right wing are between the ages of 18 and 35. So my, my gut was, my instinct was correct on that. Okay. So, and I, for me, I don't know, I don't know the, this uh, about the survey because I didn't see the, I see the results, but I don't, also, I don't know all the details, but I can tell you that I see in the uh, conversation in social media that most most of the people that that actually voted for these parties are are younger. Maybe it's uh, for you know you can be young in Israel and it can be your fifth election because we have election every six months. But they are mostly young, and I think it's because they because they're young, they were born, or maybe they went out of the closet to um, more um, accepting environment and. They didn't have to to fight all the fights like maybe the older generation had to do it. So everything seems very easy for them and uh, maybe taken for granted. So maybe they think about, okay, I'm gay, but everything okay. So, okay, so I won't be able to do surrogacy in, in the few years in Israel. Never mind, but I have more important things. But it, they, they don't think about how fragile all this achievement and how easily we can we can lose them. So they think about security, mostly internal security, can okay, inside Israel, and they don't think about the, the the consequences of this. I think I think you've hit on this issue. Is as I've been saying, is we're facing a global problem together, and I know the time's coming a little bit to, towards close, and I I have some statements to say at the end, but I want to see Hila or George, if you want to say some final words for everybody today and some feelings of how we can be working together with all of you. So George, well, I, George thank, and Hila. Yeah, thank you for, for this meeting. I mean, it's a great start. You ask what you, what you can do, but you already did it. You're already doing it. So this is great also for us. I hope it will continue. I hope we'll have better news like uh, in time. And um, uh, that's it, basically. Hilo? Yeah. Oh, firstly, I mean, we were speaking about, talking about doing this conversation, what, a, a week and a half ago. Yeah. Um, Dice wasn't rolled yet. We had no idea where we're going to go. The one thing we knew is we have to be updated and in touch with each other. So this didn't even start out as a cry for help. 
Um, and I'm proud of that. I think that speaks a lot about the kind of relationship that we believe in and the kind of partnership that we're actually practicing for the last few years. I'm um, foreseeing a future where this relationship will need to be even tighter. Um, so thank you for this. I think it would be amazing if we could do another one and it could be it could be mutual. I'd love to hear from you about what's going on with your guys' elections in a few days. Well, in two, in, in, I can tell you in a few days we'll be in, we'll have similar, I will have some feelings in some states, maybe nationally as well. Oh, God. Yeah. But but I think I want to end and first of all, thank George and Hila both and all of their colleagues and all of our friends and allies in Israel. I mean, as I said earlier, and Hila and George have alluded to this, we've all, we, 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 we're, we hear everything. And we're and we're and we're also here to be together to support everybody who's feeling this. And and as Hila said, we know I know in the wider bridge, and we all know that next week when we have election issues, we will know that you're there for us as well. I think from, from I think one thing that I know wider bridge perspective is that we need to all of you. There's I see some as I see some of our Israeli friends who are on here in our family. And they know, and I hope you all know, and I want you all to reach out to each other, Americans. Uh, Australians, English people in Britain, to people, to friends and family in Israel, and let them know you're here for them. You're not alone. And and I also think there's ways you can tangibly help us with Wire Bridge. We are not going to stop our support for the LGBTQ community in Israel. That's what we're all about, and our support will continue. And one of the programs which I know we're in the application process now is our grant program. And we fund, the, we fund a lot of wonderful programs for the Agadah. It's a separate line of funding, but we also fund the LGBT pro, NGOs, nonprofits in Israel, through our impact grant program. And we hope, we'd like to continue to fund it at a higher level. So as the year ends, I'm going to put a little pitch in here. And it wasn't my intent, but it hit me that this is a way that you really can um, support the LGBT community Americans directly from a financial perspective. Because we we want to we're going to increase our money as best we can based on the support we get from the American community. So we I can say from Wider Bridge we have a commitment and a promise with all of your support that we're going to continue to support everybody the Israeli community through our impact grants. But also I want to support all of you through our friendship and our love. So I want to thank everyone who's here today. Thank you George and Hila. We look forward to talking, and um, this is a day-to-day -day thing. We'll keep you all up to date through our, and I think there's a link here to George's article that has been posted. And lastly, I want to thank the Waterbridge staff. Um, Ethan, our executive director, couldn't be here because he did a red eye back from California, so I give his regard as well. Our vice chair, Andy Austin, is on this on the call as well, so I want to acknowledge him being here. And several of our board members I see are, are here as well. But lastly, I want to thank our staff who helped put this program together, Ilana, Ian, and lastly, Yael, who worked very hard at the last minute to pull this program together. So thank you, staff, for making today happen and to be continued. Thank you all for being here. Have a great day. Thank you all. Have a good day. Good night. Depends on where you are, I guess. Sure. <laughs>